Hello everyone, my name is Adil Hassan. I am a technical product manager at Kasala and I'm back again with the second video of my noise safe series. In the first video, we talked and learned about how to connect a D-Bash 2. In this video, we're going to be talking specifically about configuring your D-Bash 2 device using noise safe program. Of course, you can configure it using onboard menus on D-Bash 2, but doing it here is much more efficient and convenient. So first of all, yes, I'm going to connect my D-Bash 2 and remember to follow the usual protocol before connecting. And now I'm going to go straight to the configuration editor. First thing I would like to do here is to understand what are the current settings of my device. Read from instrument. Okay, so these are the current settings uh, on my device. So if I would like to make changes, I'm going to be following a chronological order, general. So here I can enable and disable octaves. If I enable them, I'll be able to change the frequency and time weightings. I can enable or disable the pause mode. Uh, enabling would this mode would allow me to filter out any unwanted noise in my readings. So I can always pause or take out any noise which I do not want in my readings. I can make certain changes to the display. I can s click to choose three values on a display or just one value. I can select the screen timeout here. I can set the screen scrolling. If I select to automatic, it keeps rolling. If I select to key press, the screen will be fixed unless I make any change. I can personalize the device. So if I write my name here, uh, my name comes up every time the device turns on. I can change the calibration level of my device here. 114 decibels is uh, a pretty much a norm in the industry, and I can this is, this this configuration menu is basically a security settings to avoid any sort of tampering. So if I disable it, then the user of the device will not be able to access the configuration menu available on the device. If I set it to clock only, they would only have access to clock. And if I enable it, of course, they will have then complete access to the configuration menu. Auto log is to avoid any human error. If this is selected, then uh, the keys will get logged as soon as the device goes into the run mode. So if you make any of these changes, make sure to save it by clicking on write to instrument button. All right. So I'm going to move down the list. I'm going to go to dosimeters, although it is just one dosimeter, but you have got options available uh, to have readings according to various standards dosimeter one is always enabled so if my prime criteria is to have reading according to iso standard i'm going to select it here but at the same time i would like to have readings according to osha hearing conversation method i'm going to click here and uh, dosimeter three i can select it to any other standard but i would like to set it to custom settings uh, if I select it to custom settings, then I can uh, make changes to all of these parameters here, which I'm not able to do if I go according to the standard, because if you are following a standard, you cannot have your own preferences. The device will work according to the standard. I'm going to select dosimeter 3 to my own personal settings. I'm going to select a threshold criteria of 85 decibels and criteria is 90 decibel and accidents I would like to have 130 decibels so these are my own custom settings if I'm gonna another thing which I can which I cannot do with anything uh, with any standard values according to the standards I can add and remove my dose values here so Again, I'm going to do that and write it to the instrument. Okay, and moving down the list, we have got this audio settings here. Uh, notes, this is important. If you select click this option, then every time you're going to start a run, the device will ask you to add a voice note so that you remember what was the reading about. Uh, event recording, very important. So if, for example, I, I have got I select LC peak from this list and the trigger level is let me say 100 decibel and the trigger interval is the minimum is 30 seconds so what is gonna happen now that for example at night time in my factory if there is 
a noise of 100 decibel and if it persists for 30 seconds then the device will start recording that noise so when I next day listen to it I would know what was happening at that time another important uh, thing is alarm I can set alarm so if any noise parameter exceeds a typical value uh, alarm will go on, uh, on my device that's quite handy timers uh, very important so you can select the timer function there are two options available here fixed medium and duration if I select fixed medium and duration and so here you can see I've select number 10 so that means that every my medium and durations will be 10 minutes each and if I select program timer then I've got an option to start and stop the device at any time and uh, day of my wish I've got Bluetooth settings here of course it's important to have it enabled for the device to communicate alright so all done I am now going to finally save these settings and again I will reiterate my point that if you are happy with your settings and if you're gonna use them in future then you can save these configuration settings by using these menus on your desktop so the next time you don't have to do all this effort and you can basically pull up this configuration by open configuration file all right i think uh, we have learned a uh, few things about configuring dbash 2 and until next time take care and i'll see you soon with international offices in the us india china and australia as well as a network of global distributors, Casella can provide the support you need wherever you are. Visit www.casellasolutions.com or email info at casellasolutions.com for more information.